Have you ever fried plantain chips that turns out black or soaks oil, break into pieces or even stick together during frying? Do you want to know the common plantain chips processing mistakes that consistently degrade the quality of your products and also drains your profit? Are you a beginner struggling to seal and package your plantain chips products without a sealing machine? Then watch this video. In this guide, I will unveil the hidden truth and secret behind a perfect crispy plantain chips how to package your chips neatly without electricity numerous tips to making good profit in plantain chips processing business with scientific proof mm. you can't afford to skip this video for anything in this world so subscribe to salpes kitchen and like this plantain chips processing free masterclass video your commercial plantain chips quality and profit driven from it will never remain the same again. Let's begin with the plantain chips processing, pointing out step by step unit processes involved. Now pay attention because each unit process is very delicate. And every mistake made in any of this unit process will lead to your plantain chips quality problem. I will tell you what causes those problems in each of the steps and the solutions to those problems. So I advise you give me your ears alongside with your pen and paper so you can learn. So the first unit process we'll talk about is selection and maturity. Let's begin with selection which is the most overlooked stage in plantain chips production. Now, to process a ripe plantain chips for business, you need a partially ripe plantain. Avoid immature ripe and overripe plantain. And that is the first mistake you can make as a plantain chips processor. Reason is that ripe plantain contains sugar in excess which caramelizes during frying to give you brown coloration, thereby making your plantain to look very dark. Sticking to each other and absorb too much of your oil. Of course, you know the implication to your cost and profit when your plantain chips absorbs too much of your oil. Expensive oil for that matter. On the other hand, immature plantains are very low in dry matter giving rise to brittle chips that can break easily. And that is the reason behind you having a lot of pieces and particles in your chips. Because your plantain was not strong, it was not matured enough. But when you use a partially ripe plantain that is physiologically matured, you will reduce your post-processing loss to barest minimum. A partially ripe plantain has a balance between sugar and starch. Why the starch produce firmness and crispiness, the sugar produces golden color and sweetness. So your plantain chips can still be very sweet while maintaining a good look. So don't just process your chips with anything you see in the market. Be intentional about the selection of your plantain. The species of plantain in use is also a great factor. Some species are soft even though they look matured, while others have a firm pulp with low moisture content. Always look out for any species that has a strong and firm pulp with a low moisture content. To ensure color stability and textural consistency, is that understood? So I already moved into step two, which is washing, peeling, slicing, and pre-treatment. So our plantain was washed with clean waters, drained, and peeled. Failure to wash properly allow latex strains and dirt to affect color and flavor. Yes, that's for those of you that always keep washing before processing. And for slicing, I'll be using this hand slicer. You can use any brand of your choice, but make sure that it has a good blade compartment. 
that will give you a chip that is up to 2 mm thickness. And if you are using a hand slicer like me, place the slicer in such a way that it blade faces upward like this. And to begin slicing as a beginner, first of all divide your platen into two equal parts. This will provide a good starting surface for your round plantain chips. Enabling it to slice evenly and smoothly. Then gently begin to push the plantain over the surface of your blade, causing it to slice. And while slicing, your goal should be to maintain a uniform slices as much as possible. Uniformity does not only give you a perfect, good-looking chips, but also helps to enhance your profitability. On even slices, on the other hand, fries are different rate, leading to uncooked or burnt slices. And that is why the use of partially ripe plantain for chips processing is not negotiable. Now, set your chips aside after slicing. Let's go into pretreatment before frying. And our aim of this pretreatment is to enhance taste, color, crust, and to reduce thickening during frying. To do that, add a cup of water in a bowl. Fill one third cup with corn flour. Alternatively, you can use three tablespoons of corn flour. Inside the liquid, add one over eight teaspoon of egg yellow powder. Now, if you are new to egg yellow, it is simply a food yellowish powder that can be used to enhance color. You can get this from any baking shop. Just ask them to give you egg yellow and you will have it. Next is the addition of our taste enhancer, which is salt. And to that, I am using half a teaspoon. Now, gently stir this to combine to mix thoroughly. And at this point, I noticed the liquid becomes thicker, so I added half cup of water. After mixing, grab your plantain and begin to apply the egg yellowish liquid into your plantain. Pour out the liquid completely and allow to soak for a while. You can decide to carefully mix it by turning with a spatula or a frying spoon. This process helps to ensure that the liquid penetrates all through the sticked layer of the plantain slices. But please handle this carefully to avoid further breakages. You can set up your oil for frying as we go into draining. And for the draining, with the help of a sieve mesh, pour out the entire content of the bowl into the mesh and allow to drain before our oil is ready for frying. Like I mentioned earlier, the salt added is for taste, the egg yellow is for enhanced appearance, and the corn flour is to reduce surface stickiness and to prevent crumbling of your plantain slices in hot oil. And this has been my secret plantain processing strategies that you cannot get anywhere in the world. <laughs> and here is the reason why it is very effective. If you are used to frying of unripe plantain, you will discover that the unripe plantain does not stick as much as the ripe plantain. This is because unripe plantain has pectin, which is complex carbohydrate with an inherent starch, which prevents the unripe plantain layers from sticking to each other. So the strategy is simple. We just coated the excess sugar that causes thickening with corn flour, which is also a starch. And the result is very amazing. Is that clear? So this water, you can reuse it for next batches until you are done frying. Now let's move to the third unit process, which is frying and processing. Frying is the most critical stage where most losses occur. 
You must possess a good chips frying skill if you must succeed in chips processing business. Now, here is the frying rule and common mistake you must avoid during the frying of your chips in hot oil. Number one, always use a high heat of about 165 to 175 degrees Celsius. This enables your plantain chips to fry quickly in hot oil without soaking oil. And do not fry in a heat higher than the recommended temperature. When your oil is too hot, the exterior burns before the moisture escapes, leading to uneven color and hard texture. On the other hand, do not fry your chips with a low heat. Because when your oil is not hot enough, your chips soaks oil. Rule number two, do not turn your chips immediately after placing it in hot oil. But allow for about two to three minutes in an hot oil before disentangling them from sticking to the pot. And while doing that, use a fork, not a spoon. This process enables the chips to float in an oil and to fry professionally without sticking to each other or to the pot. This is not the time for turning and overturning your chips in hot oil, but please allow the chips to breathe. Hmm? As long as chips is floating, you have nothing to worry about. You are only permitted to flip your chips once in a frying time after cooking for about four to five minutes. And the next time your frying spoon finds its way to your oil is to scoop out, just like this. And your chips is well fried beautifully and perfectly. Just look at that. Next, rule number three. Do not scoop your chips into the oil. But instead, drop them one after the other in your oil. Cheap surface contact in oil is one of the major reasons for thickening, so you avoid chips layers gluing together by doing this. Arguably, one might say that this is very time consuming, but the truth is it warts your product quality and profit. Separating them before the oil is more profitable wisdom than scattering them with your spoon in oil. So doing this is more of processing skill than a waste of time. Believe me that every good chips you see in the market today followed this procedure. So never you neglect this step. Is that clear? Good. Now let's move to your chips frying mistake number four. Overcrowding your chips in the oil. Overcrowding is the worst enemy of chips frying that throws the temperature of your oil in balance, thereby making your chips to soak oil. It also allows the chips to glue together since chips layers are making contact to each other. In frying summary, do not overcrowd your oil. Drop your chips one after the other in your oil. Do not oversteer your chips in oil. And maintain a good frying temperature within the range of 165 to 175 degrees C. Not too low, not too high. Scientifically speaking, these rules help you to control moisture evaporation and starch gelatinization, making you to produce dry, crunchy, crispy chips with a perfect and consistent golden coloration. Yes, that's quality chips with a longer shelf life, and I know you want that. <laughs> So now that our chips is perfectly fried, let's scoop it out of the oil. And if you still have some chips left, you can go ahead and continue frying. After frying, draining is very essential. I did mine off camera. Please note that undrained chips can still absorb surface oil. 
You can use a paper towel or just put it in a sieve and allow the oil to drop. Then allow it to cool for about 10 minutes before packaging. Just look at the chips now. Mm? Doesn't it worth it? The appearance, the crispiness, every quality you can think of. The taste is something else. Okay, now let me show you how you can package these without electricity or even a sealing machine. Note that ripe plantain chips ought to be sealed because it is sweet. If you didn't seal it, some ants into your chips and when customers see it, they will not like to buy. And that is why I want to show you how you can do it if you are a beginner, okay? And if you are not, I believe you know what to do. So you'll be needing candle, a lighter or any heat source, two iron eating spoons like this. Please know that the spoons must be of equal shape and equal size. And to begin, light up your candle and allow it to stand. Now, after that, I believe you must have printed your label. You can go to any cafe around you and tell them about your label and they will print for you. But I'll be using this as an example, okay? So now that our label is ready and we've also filled in our chips inside the packaging, now grab the pack of your chips. Now we're going to seal it at this spot immediately after the product, okay? So all you need to do is to fold it. Yes, fold it like this first. Then put in your spoon, the first one, and then put in the other one under it in such a way that there will be space for sealing. Yes, just like this. Now this place coming out, we're going to burn it off. So once it burns and gets to the spoon, it will automatically off and the pack is sealed already. Yes, that is just it. It's as simple as that. Look at it. It is well sealed. Look at it. Very neat. Neatly sealed. So the next is to put in your label inside it. After putting in your label, you can choose to use the gum on the nylon to seal it by just peeling it off. Yes, and just gum it like this. Fine, good and fine. But if you don't want, you can still use your spoon method place it front and back and then burn it off it will still seal okay yes look at it hmm? it's just very simple yes so dear viewers in conclusion we've explored the hidden truth and secret behind a perfect plantain chips production from proper fruit selection to innovative sealing method Apply these principles consistently to produce chips that are crispy, attractive, and profitable. For more food science-based processing guide, subscribe to Salpe's Kitchen and like our video always. May your work yield excellence. May your brand grow in recognition. And may your hand prosper in all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.